in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed can help me understand the ways of God. The Bible is a very interesting book. Unlike novels or many other books that have been written by religious founders and people who have documented their convictions, the Bible is able to convey to any man the realities of the spirit, the very mind of God. Second Timothy chapter 3. It's good to see everyone. I'll read just two verses, and then we'll teach. Verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. If you're there, say amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man. And he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable anything the Bible tells you is profitable, I think you should pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable. And so we spend time, we spend resources. Um, for instance, being gainfully employed is profitable. So we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed. We are happy. Right? We consider marriage to be profitable having children is profitable so when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child we all celebrate there are things in our lives that are profitable and here paul is telling his son in the gospel he's saying look all scripture is given by inspiration of god he said and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. To the end that whoever commits himself to them, he says that the man of God may be what? The word perfect, there's the word mature. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished. I like that. Not just furnished. He said thoroughly furnished unto how many all good works please listen to me we all want to see results in our lives we all want to be mightily used by god in different areas it's been the cry of people that's why many of us are gathered here trusting that we'll learn of the ways of god and here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of god mature then is able to make him thoroughly furnished he uses a language that is used in, in in furniture work when you know how furniture is the finishing you put on it you you file it you polish it and it looks beautiful it says thoroughly furnished 
So you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal. So minimal, anyone can trust you. Your voice can be taken as the voice of God. That's what it means to be thoroughly furnished. Such that when you communicate truths to people, they don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing. They have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited. Your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction. And so their hearts are open to receive. Then he says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto the healing ministry. Unto delivering people. Unto saving people. Right? Acts 10 38 says how um, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power. The Bible says he went about doing what? Good. See that? So when the Bible talks of good works, anything that is able to reproduce the victory, the life, the power, the love, the might of God is considered to be good works. Good works are not ambitions. When the Bible talks about good works, it's not talking about your ambition. Everything that you commit yourself to under Christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain, and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them. That is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down. And I don't even know what. Because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um, is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination we mean that they have been able to educate their minds they have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension and they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance are we together now and so we call them the enlightened ones even in the world they have groups and cults that they call illuminati and, and those people, Pastor, is that you? God bless you. I'd like us to bless him, great man of God, all the way from Kaduna. Thank you. Please, can you stand up? Let's honor you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're to have a great meeting in his church, and um, we couldn't make it, but um, we're coming. We're coming loaded, and we'll bless the whole church. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance what is ignorance absence of light absence of strategy absence of illumination absence of understanding say amen there is so much ignorance in the body we have to contend with god's light to drive away this darkness otherwise the days that are coming will um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now 
are separating the church into very two clear lines it's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you're doing the disciples kept walking with jesus they thought they were understanding what he was teaching and one time he went up to the mount of transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition have you read that in scripture and they were so listen let me tell you something that you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened i'm going to tell you what illumination is those guys had been with jesus they heard him every time and now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves trying everything they knew to do and here comes jesus from the mountain and then they brought the man they said your disciples could not heal him and and they just stood dumbfounded hoping jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special and jesus proved them wrong isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special it's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area it cancels out every excuse you would have given hallelujah that's why they hated jesus they hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses. Madam look this and that and that and she believed it but here comes jesus and then he lays hands on her and even tells her madam i'm surprised you are sick didn't they teach you all the people who have been teaching every time didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of abraham did they not tell you the covenant that god had with him ah, the woman said I, I, nobody told me and the, the scribes were standing there hoping jesus will fail and to their shame he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight and they started finding excuses look at the excuses they brought don't heal people on sunday don't give them food there's all kinds of flimsy excuses i pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever in the name of jesus christ we never know how cheap satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination hallelujah illumination it's a very interesting word isaiah chapter 60 please it's a scripture i've been meditating upon not just because the lord gave it to us as a prophetic word everything in your life is at the mercy of light everything in your life is at the mercy of light please hear me and take what i'm saying seriously your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light your illumination your depth of spiritual enlightenment the quality of your ministry the quality of your life it says my son pay attention to my words he says incline them to your ears do not let them depart from you he said they are life to those who find them not those who hear about it they are life to those who found them and health to their flesh he says in isaiah 60 verse 1 what's the first word arise arise can we get amplified is it possible I like the way I, I Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. listen this is this is the prophet speaking 
it says that circumstances have kept you at a level have kept your family at a level nobody crosses a particular line nobody crosses a particular dimension a line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line and now he says arise it's a prophetic call break standards do something that has not been done before and then he says shine be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light is come you've heard me say it again not for your light is available it has always been available but until it comes to you are we together now that's why two people brothers and sisters walk this earth and their their, their testimonies are different like goshen and egypt others were dying in egypt whereas there was absolute tranquility in goshen any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of god cannot be helped that's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance no amount of breakthrough even if you pour one gallon of oil you see the trouble with the church is we we uh, of course that's that's not applicable here but i'm speaking to the church we hate illumination but we love what illumination only can bring if i look at you right now and say sam do you know that there's a problem around your life i see somebody i see an altar sam says now you are talking are you getting the point now anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word we love it and we embrace it that's the reason why we love healing we love deliverance because in our minds we think it's a faster route instead of studying the bible i can just get deliverance once you see nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth they all complement themselves this is why you can find believers they can go through deliverance they can have healings but never able to walk in certain truths it's always very comfortable to say oh demons are stopping me there's a cause there's this and that and that but then many people in the body of christ believe me many people are not passionate after knowledge i was taught by the holy ghost that only second to your passion and desire for god your next assignment should be an a an unquenchable pursuit for illumination you must have a hunger for light you must have a resentment for ignorance you must have such such a resentment for ignorance we travel around and i look at people outside and i see how people are victims of what they don't know you watch people all around victims of what they don't know you can see a woman sit down and and please don't feel bad I, I mean see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have they never can know that life can be better you see a lot of pastors well-meaning and sincere people but victims of darkness victims of ignorance And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 we're headed for verse 3 but let's just look at verse 2 media help us verse 2 it says for behold see darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people he said but the lord shall arise upon you 
and his glory shall be seen on you now this is the part the part that blesses me so much verse 3 ah kabbalah I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles, is a force it can't be stopped gentiles shall come to your light and this is the part that is even greater it says they are kings see their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people the kings believe they have lights too they too have some level of result so your initial light will not impress them it will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable. But they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry. But it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. It didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. 
Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light illumination let me tell you what illumination is reading your bible does not mean you have illumination cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination are we together now see one of the challenges with the body of christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because i'm quoting them you don't have to be a child of god to be able to quote scripture the concept of memory is a psychological thing anybody can learn it we teach children to recite memory verse abi sunday school john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning and the child is saying it just like like a robot you think that child is enlightened of course he's on his way to en to enlightenment but it's not enlightened many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures and we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out it means we are illuminated no you are only illuminated when understanding comes when you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture illumination has come for you otherwise everything you have is just the letter and the bible says it can kill learn this It's not just because you found it in the Bible where it was written by his stripes I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men we're going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen. Are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back 
and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely Do I have light or do I just have the letter? Do I have light? Write this word down. The mysteries of the kingdom. I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries they have come to understand and apply. Write those two words, understanding and application. These are the two things that make the word of God profit you, understanding and application. In all you're getting, it says get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous i rather stay with i rather stay with a herbalist a herbalist is more friendly at least he's passionate about something than than a careless person who has no passion his ignorance will affect you. Don't forget, people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? 
What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow he's in theater arts. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic, it's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorant they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads hallelujah there is something bishop oyedeko knows that we do not know there is something he has handled that is producing the results are we together oh he's just lucky he had an 18 hour vision wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing that encounter I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation? There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, is not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? 
Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But it says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. Alright, can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. 
I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and it's even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible. This one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalatayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody say there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up pastor femi stand up promise watch these guys please sit down sit down were you afraid of sitting did you turn back to even check you know why because they are sitting based on an enlightenment they know what this chair can do are we together now they know that this chair can take their weight they are not thinking about it i'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me I don't expect it to are we together now i'm not holding this trusting it to scatter no 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 this guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop he knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge i gave an example last year i think when i was teaching i don't know if he was here or another meeting if i call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and i say sit down look how wonderful what he's playing is are we together now that person who doesn't know how to play keyboard cameraman come uh, do you know how to play keyboard don't waste our time come 
All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these keys not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. <laughs> All right, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard. Same church, same ministry, same business, same academics, same Nigeria. Play, go ahead. Anything. Same keyboard. That guy said his government. That guy said it's, it's, it's Nigeria that is not giving job. That guy says machines that cause cancer. I mean, look at this. Listen, the Bible. Now, watch this. When everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out, what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you they started it quietly but now they are open about it everybody is telling you you are really a nuisance to me pastors who is seeking you who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Aye. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and bail yourself out of this wicked world 
Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own, even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say, this. I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if, you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed, although you are in a place of tremendous change pride familiarity you do not discern you do not discern please listen to me the bible says you don't discern the lord's body and for that reason many are weak many are sick oh i've had koinonia message activating breakthrough destiny i've had it i was even there they use me as an example and you think that letter is illumination and somebody somewhere in one one room made with mud will download it and say lord i have found it i found the key so destiny help us and be praying it and the holy ghost will say this is it a woman came from benway state i think i, I can't remember last year or so this woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years. They had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman, I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God will do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit. Not good dressing. Not English. Not even Rema. It says, you, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on high. it's in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on high. in your name
listen. Every day of my life, I listen to at least one koinonia message. I know there are uncommon mysteries. Forget that it came through me. I have learned many things from my messages than many messages. I listen to it and I'm praying. And when is the time when apostle is prophesying, I kneel down and I lift my hands as he's speaking. See, listen, you have to learn what I'm telling you. Because this year, make up your mind not to cheat yourself. See, arrogance with no result is not leading. It's, it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there. He say, it's just that I kept the money. So, no, 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 no. I'm tired of lack of results. There is a higher standard God is gauging me with. God will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. Are we together now? Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations. During my retreat for this year, I said any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this. No matter how you deceive me, I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we'll start. Because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man. A man must appear for that door to open. So my prayer is very strategic and intentional. I don't pray stupid prayers. I pray with intelligence. Lord, where are the helpers? I call them. Because I know if a helper does not appear, that door will not open. And here comes the helper. Because I know how to call them. They never come on their own. They are always called. You have been waiting for them. You will wait forever. There is a mystery that calls helpers. Are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages 
every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming so there are so many things sucking out of me time is so limited for me but many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activate us what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the bible that strangers shall feed your flock? which one is uncle again but in your mind according to what you know if your uncle does not pick your call after two days you are dead who told you Aya. have you not had the ravens brought bread for elijah where did the ravens come from lack of light has limited us please hear what i'm saying god can raise help us for you you have tied god how many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people it's because we have not put balloon around the church that's why people are not coming no and we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and 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 we have protocol and pa no power no grace no understanding no results the trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused lean and hungry say i'm tired of guessing say it again i don't know how to beg you and make you believe what i'm saying I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This, our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me, I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next, when, 14. Next week, Friday. Next week, Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? honestly can you say it me i can say it oh my goodness i wave poverty by it wave me back deal done because for as long as there is one sick body hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed you see There is something you can hold on to brothers and sisters that will wipe your tears look at frank edwards he carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it and bought cars with it and started an ngo with it and his blessing lies with it what have you been ignoring that is authorizing satan in your life what have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school. You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? 
I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you, with that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? Oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, bah, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. They are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a, a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father god is telling you this way the authority over your life is saying this way and people say submit what have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, for I need you more and more. I'm so aware of my ignorance, so I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, Lord, I need you. I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said 
do I understand what is don't think what you think God said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer you say five but you say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong you say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it if i am not getting results in my life right now and pastor femi is getting results and i try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious i'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers oh yes they know where to get answers i told you was it last week or week before last that if i am an unbeliever when i'm sick i promise you i'll go to babalao i wouldn't do it in the secret all these go to the secret i will do it openly let camera even follow me i will go there and then i'll wait for the one person who will come to challenge me and i'll bring another person as sick as me and say i will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him otherwise go back home as simple as that are we together i foresee that a time will come that thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues Pharaoh had to give up. Pastors, let's stop deceiving people. We know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth. We know where we have results and where we don't have results. Let's admit it and not explain. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestation. There are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now. Some of them have come desperate to receive something. Imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. 
he's been influenced by powers you see the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you so when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you but now another light has delivered you and then number two you now know that it's not fighting with him physically and saying daddy i wound you the moment he says that you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now Oh, a lecturer promised me that this time around I will get A in my project. What if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense? Then you fail. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Oh, God said I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You to ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us. You've raised 500,000. One sickness will wipe it away. But you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night. And get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story 
and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and God will say you ask for it I said ask and you shall receive but the Bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything I believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ I know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change all men are not equal criticize me but just listen all men are not equal if you take that mindset this is not supposed to be a bad statement please don't misunderstand me I wish it were a lie but it's the truth all men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of, and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you will leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen I'm talking about light and illumination the Bible says let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness Colossians 3 16 but you see one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me I've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet Christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the Bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says Christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the Holy Spirit you don't come and say Holy Spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with God but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself. You hear me say this thing all the time. There, no matter how arrogant you are, no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries. It's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you. And you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kind I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ serve God with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say I thought I, I need somebody with Rema tell me Greek and Hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like John like 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 a prophet even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle John said ah I've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John when it 
was time the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic council separate me Paul and Barnabas he spoke to them there was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets but they never excelled in ministry look at that they died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets they ignored the structure of the body listen there are many people the bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again that's why some of us are where we are gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around there's a pastor friend i used to watch him um the guy loves me so much he admires me but I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message. Hear it now and rise. Wake up and live. Rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist. A few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier. The Bible says for this cause many are weak. When it was time, when sickness, when the serpents were destroying the people, nothing happened to Moses. Question, what did the snake see that made them not to bite Moses? It's in your Bible right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in samaria elisha came he was not saying hey i'm dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply brothers and sisters there is a way out of every situation in your life you can come to a man of god to pray for you but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out 
for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way i have ministered to people and their lives have changed a, a woman gave a testimony and this is true this is I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry the woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that you, you know what i'm saying and one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says oh well she says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of God and put pressure on his office. Not anoint him, his office. It will force him to release something into your life. When I say honor, I don't mean money. A deep, a deep seated. There are few men of God I've met in my life. And the way I honored them when they were speaking and blessing me, I knew it came from their spirit. I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And they're like, oh God, thank you. And you just threw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tight thing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you, just, you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no when abraham met melchizedek the king of salem that ancient city listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid i know i'm about to bless you but my first instruction is fear not you have done something that is about to bring prosperity people will not understand the mystery so be courageous to take the criticisms because i'm about to change your life he said i am your exceeding great reward abraham is so intelligent the moment god said i am your exceeding great reward he, the, abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much he said god so let's talk about my future because i know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor you are now beginning to speak generational where is the child and god says ah who is this man that ha that has my mind That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. 
Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him, you see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding. Understanding. It was an impartation. Just one mystery I've shared with you. Do you know, if you hold on to this mystery, this law of honor, this year alone, you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime, I promise you. Just this law. Just this law. Just this law. Something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life. Something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach god with a stubborn heart you approach god with a childlike heart please koinonia hear me i'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say i love you too much to mislead you gentiles please give us isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah Saul Kai oh my goodness Saul's donkey was missing his father Kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey I hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gates at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and God is saying, no, 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 no. Everybody is growing, but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see. Look at, at once they met Samuel. Samuel said, I will tell you every, he didn't say I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there, wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? 
a man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah, I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums, story building, three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you, he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up. The Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again. And he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them. And one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron. No grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah. So this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head and say, I lived with this guy forever. I, he was my roommate, yet I didn't have the eyes to see. I was in his church. I was even an usher. There was capacity like this to help me. Look at Gehazi, foolish man. If you wanted money, if, if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money, is it not to kneel down and beg? Rather than going to lie. You see why he's foolish? Very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any mantle. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, My father, change my story. And he said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, As you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. What kind? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy honor oh, something you are ignoring is destroying your life we are going to pray the purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. What are you ignoring? Some of you, your family members have ignored you. That's why things have not changed. They have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life. So every time you step in, your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace. But they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding. The grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you Lord for this word. I'd like you to lift your voice and pray. 
and say lord i know that the mountain before me can live i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job lift everything before god lord i know i've been trying and trying and trying i've been trying i've done all i know to do but tonight i admit i admit i just show me oh god show me what i need to do those outside make sure you are praying jesus brought you here to change your life forever light 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 Sikabarato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se tele pratika de koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results. Be very sincere with God and say, Lord, there has to be a way out of this. Lift your voice and pray. Please take it serious, Koinonia. Lord, I've not seen the anointing in my life. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I've prayed and fasted. Nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen is just not changing no matter what i do i know something is wrong lord favor i've not caught the mystery of favor everybody hates me everybody runs away from me even those who want to help me change their mind something must be wrong somewhere i admit tonight that i need help lord i pray for my academic it's been from one tragedy to another there, there's got to be a way out hallelujah hallelujah listen we are still praying i like you to pray and say lord i make a vow before you i'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around come on be angry with the challenges in your life and pray Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got. And one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to Mark 1, 2, 3. And it was like an anointing that came. I knew I had gotten it. I knew I had gotten it. When people talk about prosperity, most of the scriptures, Deuteronomy 8.18, I've not gotten light from that scripture. Of God, and God will take you through that word to somewhere else. That becomes your access point out. 
are we together two more prayer points you're going to pray and say lord every principle i have ignored that is responsible for where i am now i receive grace to make amendments go ahead and pray many of us have ignored the law of honor you have not discerned the body lord i cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Shake it, take it, and the book of Sopras. Emprapos, Copros, Kelebos, Rebecca Soto, take it, and the coach at the other. Manda Brasco, La Bresca, Liana Brasca, Vasi, get anybody. Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of His grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life that's revelation god said it's not revelation it's prophecy it takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is a there is an alignment. There is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Ebrako soto pras ke baria da balada bash. Raka parado soto preshe pere ke tele bosh. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3 there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery. That any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars. He said, He that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon speaking of wisdom said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice just for winning souls you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom and many of us want to be wise we want to do all of that and you watch sinners go to hell you are coming for meeting and you watch people around you are not passionate you are embarrassed the Bible says, he that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. 
He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind there. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls. Transform. Souls. Genuinely saved. Souls. Established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month. And you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. See, if you say you are growing spiritually, ask yourself, what parameter am I using to measure my growth? If you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of Rema, you are fooling yourself. At the end of it, you will cry. A small child who may not know much, but do much with what he or she knows, will be standing and excelling. Just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking English, and they will write the exam and get 40. And one obedient student, he follows the examples as taught. Every, he may not be so smart, but he's just too obedient to be average. The ways of the kingdom have been simplified. Follow it with total obedience and conviction and walk your way to a life of wonder. Do you know, especially for pastors, many pastors are stubborn, I tell you. They never listen. They never walk. This part of, this humility, the precepts of God, they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years. So they find out they are preaching more, they are fasting more, there's no result. Whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out. You see another man of God just come up with a heart panting after God. And you, you will look around his life and say, where is the results? They are spiritual laws. You don't guess them. They are there. You follow them or you keep rumbling up and down. Let me pray for you before I make the altar call. Or let me even make the altar call first. Please look up. I want to make the altar call. I'm very happy when I make altar calls. You know why altar calls are important? Altar calls are important because they give the people an opportunity to respond to God. There are people outside. There are people inside waiting right now for the man of God to just make a call and let them come. Because as you teach, the spirit of God is convicting people. There are two sets of people who should run out here right now. Many inside and outside. I spoke about ignoring certain laws. Could it be that this is what you have ignored? You have ignored Jesus. Trying to live a life outside him. You have ignored Jesus. He looks like one of those spiritual leaders to you. Tonight, if you will only make that adjustment and embrace him as your savior, that begins the beginning of a journey towards victory. And there are people who at one time were holding Jesus Christ very seriously. But at a point you felt other things were serious. And I'm not just talking of backsliding. You just left the whole thing tonight. There is room for you. 
these two people i'll just count one to ten very quickly you are here you are outside the spirit of god is talking to you don't argue make your way to the front the bible says if you hear his voice do not harden your heart begin to celebrate them they are coming god bless you god bless you many of them are coming inside and outside the devil is a liar leave your seat and come forget about your friend god bless you make your way to the front man of god i'm tired of the way my life is i don't want to pretend i'm making progress whereas i'm deceiving myself something you are ignoring may be responsible for the predicament in your life clear the way for them outside as they come god bless you god bless you sir god bless you ma god bless you keep clapping please koinonia some of us are still sitting the moment the holy ghost starts talking to you and says you are the one the man of god is talking about you can hear his voice leave your seat and make your way to the front young and old say i'm tired i can't be the god of my life i'm ready to hand over my life to one listen you have to pray i like you to leave your seat and come say lord i managed my life by myself for 20 years and here's my conclusion i mismanaged it i need to hand it over to one who can manage my life for me make your way to the front join them quickly please join them quickly join them quickly there are still one or two people outside join them quickly let's sing that song savior savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to say he is mighty to forever forever author of salvation he rose and conquered a place one more time I salute you for this great decision some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time listen there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of when we're giving you an award you ask us to open our eyes there is nothing you have done there's no way you have lived that God will run away from you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears you are standing face to face with destiny time never changes anything it's a decision and you are making a very serious decision don't make it an emotional decision please lift your right hand Jesus is in this place and you are talking to him don't just think of someone in heaven he's right here with us say after me Lord Jesus those there you can make sure you, you join please Lord Jesus I ask you tonight to help me I've heard your word and I'm tired of living my life my own way I come before you broken humbled by your word I make Jesus Lord of my life say it I receive forgiveness of sins I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare from today that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of the world is broken over me I break free from wrong associations that keep me in sin from today I move forward ever and backward never my sins are forgiven I am the righteousness of God help that lady under the anointing I'm a new person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ father I pray for this once I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I pray you will never never go back to the world again the appetite for the flesh the appetite for sin is broken in your life
and i pray that the holy ghost will take over your life in a very strange way he will make you mighty in the name of jesus christ i'm telling you some of you will go back and delete all those junks from your phone you will call some people and tell them i love you but this is the last time you will ever see me again i've made a serious decision for jesus in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen listen let me just encourage you quickly before you go it's not enough to get born again and go back to those wrong associations some of you know the people you have left it's important for you to be grafted into the house of god the bible says they that be planted in the house of god will flourish in the courts of our god you don't get born again and go back and those guys mock you and give you one week and still destroy you cut away from them when you see when you come to church you are serious with god you will join a workforce and have new friends new friends who love jesus and are serious praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus you will never go back to your old ways in jesus name sir before they go come i don't know you but the lord is giving you a new beginning right i'm seeing that there is a cause of darkness there's deliverance happening to you from the time you came huh there's been a lot of struggle in your life there are things i cannot tell you now but the lord is changing your story forever this is the greatest decision not just going to a man of god to pray for you when you surrender to jesus christ some things will leave they came with the old nature so they will pack their load and go at once i pray for you the lord will help you in jesus name no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming out to me three and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 men are god's conduits they communicate possibilities most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man you need the ministry of men i don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men you need the giving ministry of men you need the lifting ministry of men you need the endorsing ministry of men Please tonight, let your expectation be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony. When you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories there are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight there are matters that the quickening of the spirit providing illumination 
will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have, and they can give it. There are things that men have, and they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have, but you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. Diligent missing the rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves 
not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave the seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, i like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter. And the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that it must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now. 
be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now he baratos kalabaratakata enketalakatos kabratasia i command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open closed by the hand of darkness i declare be open be open now be open now be open now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh is showing me chains over people's heads i decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online i want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position, right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed. By the authority of heaven, I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such... I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare every chain holding anyone now. In the name of Jesus, I break those chains now. 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 Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. 
In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the Spirit. Right now let the anointing of the Spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God. We are going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where this, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. 
just this row, I'm seeing a cloud just right here, right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. It's a lady, bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I curse the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take our time and... God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold her there I'm going to hold your hand it's a strange mystery I'm going to hold your hand but the person who will fall is on this rope bring the person for me in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare just don't worry leave the baby the person who will fall is not this lady is on this rope like this this rope right to the back in the mighty name of Jesus I declare by the Spirit of the Living God that everything that does not name the name of Christ right now I command it must go in the name of Jesus Christ it must go by the grace of God I set you free my dear in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare take what you put in her dream life let it live now take what you put inside her through the dream miscarriage please come please don't feel embarrassed this is a family did i pray for you did i pray for you it's all right if I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you. Your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You are sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should respect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people, some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna, I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ojibwe. There is a grace. Please hear me. What? What? Where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. 
the Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Amen. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand... It's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer yes, sir. and you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the laugh here? Who is sick? Look at you on a thin part of my body. It's turning. 
Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam, you did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. Yes, I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister. And the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I, don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a lone drum. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, guy, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's presenting. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member. And yet he's doing... Now I'm not saying laundry is an insult. But the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship. And just of a sudden... He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the council of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man is not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like it, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how sir, speak anyone? <laughs> Divide visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, he lives. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I have a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values 
the value system of the kingdom the spirit life must be at work in us in as much as i know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children male and female when our people are getting married i pray for them that god will give them children male and female but you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say give me male children female children of course i understand i'm, I'm an african because of issues of inheritance and other things but we have to be careful whatever god has not given you you cannot have it and if you go to the devil to have it let me tell you the consequence will be waiting for you are we together madam look at me do you believe if i pray for you yes, sir. you will come here with a male child yes sir yes sir i do, I do intend to have madam what did you see me doing for you in a dream Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. Yes, I want you to believe it. Yes, you believe that? Yes, Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. Yes, and we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing, kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yay! Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No mercies again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please, reduce public life, watching football, going for marriages that you don't have any business to. I'm not saying you should not honor people, but the times that we're living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry, it's okay. I don't know you, I've never seen you. You can see, how will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I... I I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? 
because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What now? I'm, I'm the only one. Six months. Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back with the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious. And just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships relationships loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself i'm praying right now by the anointing of the holy spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed i declare by the power of the holy spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the god of heaven let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity. You see, please give this woman her photo, that woman under the anointing. We have to pray. Um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out, but in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming out? Why is she coming out? The, the family, is, she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she's, she's, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not, you see, the thing about the anointing, I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that, you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. 
It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who have prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them and let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, 
um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay, okay, there is, there is overflow to B, then there is overflow 4. Please listen, this is overflow 1, this is overflow 2, there is overflow 2 B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down, then there's overflow 4, just from the gate of overflow 3, then we have overflow 3 in the main building, and then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows, there will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Abaratuska la brandege baratuske di. Abratuza dege baratusha le katos. Ente prata salaga no bradike di. Karusa tapradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God 
even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name that is above all names, there are, hold on please, there are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray, and I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord, I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. Please don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here, as God is visiting you here, Every other person connected to you whose request you have written here, we command a miracle for them where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here. We put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus. Please believe. Let your don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now.
every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the lord i command and i declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from god who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request i stand by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus i compel them to attend to your matters i compel them to attend to your matters i compel them to attend to your matter everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of god you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy i push you to that level by prophecy i push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what i'm doing i'm not just speaking i'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak zakatapakatos take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of Jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place i pray for you this is an impartation wherever you are i declare like the dew of heaven the kind of grace you must carry for this season let it land on your destiny now by this anointing i forbid you from being ignored in the name of jesus christ I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said this is the Lord's doing as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here I declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministrations let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of God
in the name of Jesus Christ Ebenezer the helper of men I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters they are devourers I pray for you the kind of job that represents dignity that will honor you and help you to build your home well may the God of heaven give you such a job Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire, no room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God. The, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you, the unction to stay, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated there are some of you now listen there are levels of graces you should have left sincerely there are dimensions of power there are haziness certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception there is a level of authority there is an office you should be sitting on now but it's not yet there i pray for you the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now listen everything in your life that has refused to grow God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow no membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit like the angel of death is moving over families. Attacking children. Attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata. And they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant a tumor see let me tell you whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life challenges are not the issue but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said if you have not seen what God said don't stop I pray for you the spirit of a warrior the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God may that grace rest upon you now yeah. 
as a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life, or your loved ones, or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly darling. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand. And say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing, honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the son of God this night I received Jesus as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that according to Scripture I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I'm not only heaven bound but I reign in life I receive of the Holy Spirit from today I declare and forever that I'm a child of God amen I declare over you by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way for many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but um, please listen. We're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us. By God's grace, I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now, but particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There yeah, are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place. And um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people, please don't find offense, is by no way belittling you. Every, we believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to 
to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just quizzed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far, um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes, I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament let's stretch our hands to them and bless them we love you and we are praying for you from the depth of our hearts we are blessing you blessing your ministries blessing your businesses blessing your career blessing your family we want to see the hand of God upon your life we want to see you loving the Lord like never before we want to see you growing in the things of God we want to see you walking in purpose and destiny we want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal himself to you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.